Hello, pediatric surgery family. I'm M. Tom Bash, a research fellow from Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center. And along with Stay Current, we are sharing knowledge to improve child health around the globe. Today, our team is going to deliver the articles that you should know about. We have four papers today. First three of them are from the Journal of Pediatric Surgery. And the last one is from the British Journal of Surgery. We don't have much time, so let's start. Our first paper titled as Impact of Rectal Dissection Technique on Primary School Age Outcomes for a British and Irish Cohort of Children with Hirschsprung Disease by Ellen et al. This paper is summarized by Brittany Levy. She's a research fellow at Cincinnati Children's Hospital. This article is asking, does the type of rectal dissection for Hirschsprung's disease matter as kids grow up? To answer this question, they looked at 277 kids. About half of them had a Suave, a third Duhamel, and the rest had a Swenson. 217 of those kids had long-term outcome data. So what did they find? Well, what they found is that a Duhamel has the lowest risk of incontinence, but the highest risk of constipation in school-aged children. Great, let's keep moving. Our second paper is the importance of the ileocecal valve and colon in achieving intestinal independence in infants with short bowel syndrome by Peters et al. This paper is summarized by Rod Gerardo. He's a general surgery resident at Wright State University and a former research fellow at Cincinnati Children's Hospital. In this retrospective review, the researchers looked at 55 pediatric patients with small bowel syndrome and whether or not the presence or absence of an ileocecal valve and or a colon can predict enteral autonomy. What did they find? Those infants with an ileocecal valve had significantly shorter duration on parenteral nutrition and further, those patients with less than 50% of their colon also had significantly less time on parenteral nutrition as long as they had their ileocecal valve. So what do you do? Do you try to preserve the ileocecal valve? Leave a comment below. Next, we have our third paper of the day. Effect of surgeon volume on pediatric thyroid surgery outcomes, a systematic review by Olson et al. This paper is summarized by Cecily Hijena. She's also a research fellow at Cincinnati Children's Hospital. This is a systematic review made by Lurie Children's Hospital in Chicago. Their aim was to address the definition of a high volume surgeon, examine if that has a relationship with the patient's outcomes. And what did they find? They analyzed 10 studies with 6,430 patients. And what they found is that the definition of a high volume surgeon is changed a lot. It goes from nine thyroidectomies a year to over 200 thyroidectomies with at least being 30 in pediatric patients. Those that were made by high volume surgeons show shorter length of stay. So it seems that for thyroid pathology, high volume surgeons does matter. And here's the last paper of the day. It's from the British Journal of Surgery. Tissue adhesive, adhesive tape, and sutures for skin closure of pediatric surgical wounds. Prospective Randomized Clinical Trial by Tendon et al. And this paper is summarized by Ellen and Cisco. She's a research fellow at Cincinnati Children's Hospital as well. In this study, the authors wanted to see if there were differences in wound outcomes for kids with different types of skin closure. So they did a prospective randomized controlled trial between 2017 and 2018. They compared outcomes for three groups sutures with tissue adhesive over top like Dermabond, sutures with adhesive tape over top like Steri strips, and sutures alone. They assessed the wounds at two weeks, six weeks, and more than six months after the operation by surveying clinicians and parents. They found that the wounds with tissue adhesive had poorer cosmesis at six weeks, but the difference was gone by six months. And overall, there was no difference between the three groups at six months for clinicians or for parents. Check the link in the description below to read each paper. We hope you liked this episode. Please follow us on social media, give us a rating, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to download our Stay Current app on App Store or Play Store for more content. Thank you for listening. Cincinnati Children's Hospital and Stay Current 
are sharing knowledge to improve child health around the globe.